I remember how toting this bag around used to make me feel so cool and powerful. Sarah Jessica Parker once wore this very same bag on an episode of Sex and the City. Oh well, time for this to be sold too. I've been getting rid of almost everything I accumulated up till I was about 34. I'm now 39, so that means getting rid of about 95% of my former life has taken me more than 5 years so far. I had so many boxes of emotional hoarding, childhood mementos, books and toys I loved, things to remember old friends and family by, closets full of clothes and shoes and bags that were uncomfortable reminders of how I'd spent over a decade of my life building a false image to show society. A decade ago, I finally got up the courage to change my life and quit a corporate career that didn't fulfill me and left my country to pursue my dreams elsewhere. Up until the pandemic, I was moving countries every few months, so I lived out of one luggage and one backpack, basically what I can carry traveling by myself. I got by with only maybe 5% of stuff that I had from my previous life and I'd never lived better or happier. Getting rid of 95% of my life, selling, giving away or disposing of almost all of my possessions just made me realize so many things that were kind of painful yet liberating. So I just wanted to share them with you today in case it can help you too. So hit that like button and say hello down below if you're on your own decluttering and minimalist living journey. And remember that a lot of stuff is really just emotional baggage. So let's let it all go so we can all move forward and be a step closer to living the life we truly want. I grew up with parents who experienced hardship and struggle in their growing up years. All my life, my parents will always say things like, just in case or don't waste. And everything we had at home will usually end up in a box, waiting for a far off day in the future where we might need it again. Like most Asian parents, my mom and dad don't say emotional stuff like I love you, which I've always hungered for. But how my parents have always shown me love was through making sure I never lacked for anything. They bought me all the books and toys I wanted, especially books. They were so proud that I loved reading. All those boxes and boxes of stuff that I had from my growing up years was also, to me, my parents' love and hard-earned money. For over 30 years, we kept almost everything. Until sadly, we realized that the cost of all the stuff was not just the money that my mom and dad paid for them, there's also the cost of the storage space they took up in our house all these years more and more space, space that we could have lived in, that my niece and nephew can play in and create new happy memories. It was also the thousands of dollars of getting the exterminator to come to the house to get rid of the termites that had started living off some of these 20 and 30 year old books. Plus the heartache of realizing that it's really the memories of happy times I was trying to hold on to which will probably be forever in my brain, mementos or not. But all this stuff was just stuff, taking up space needlessly. Then there were the things I bought myself in my 20s after I started working. Closets full of clothes and bags and shoes for Jean the corporate lawyer. Never mind that really I was a surfer trapped in the body of a lawyer and all I really wanted to do was to travel and surf and experience life out there, outside of Singapore in the raw. <laughs> I didn't have the courage to say no to others and to live life being genuine to myself though. So instead, I buried my head in denial and I dragged myself to work every day to make more money so I can buy more of these expensive costumes to continue playing this role that felt completely wrong and made me so unhappy. Plus, look at all those advertisements by these brands and companies. The models in those ads look so happy wearing these clothes and bags and shoes and going to work. 
I completely bought into the idea that buying those stuff and going to work looking like them would make me happy too. Sadly, I realized years later that stuff doesn't change anything in your life. At most, they just distract you from focusing on the real problems. Things do not define us. Our actions and successes and failures in life defines us. And ironically, the continuous chase of these external objects and their promised dreams often holds us back from the actualization of those very same dreams simply by being a waste of time, money, and energy. As opposed to buying and hoarding stuff, a much better use of time and resources may be to learn new stuff and expose ourselves to new experiences. So you may be interested in today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a huge range of topics from filmmaking, art and creativity to freelancing, self-care and more. So one of the new skills I've picked up in the last few years is creating online content to share what's meaningful to me. And I do this through making videos and posting them on YouTube. It was a completely foreign thing to me, but luckily my hubs Vitali loves cameras and making videos, and I enjoy writing and telling stories. So together we've created a bunch of videos that have actually made some impact on other people. Doing this is a combination of a lot of different skills, and here's where Skillshare really came in. It's so handy for us to learn a bunch of different things off one platform offering quality classes, like Ali Abdal's video editing with Final Cut Pro X, From Beginner to YouTube, and Nathaniel Drew's Creativity Unleashed, Discover, Hone, and Share Your Voice Online. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 viewers to use this link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So, you can check out that class by Ali and Nathaniel that I mentioned, or just look around Skillshare's entire class library for one month, absolutely free. For the last 10 years, leaving almost all my stuff behind, I've been out there conquering my own mountains. I learned new livelihoods from scratch and created a new life. I got better at the hobbies that I loved, creativity, art, surfing. I started my own businesses and made money off them. After traveling around so many places, I finally met a man who's truly right for me and we got married and started new adventures together. We had this dream of living permanently in Bali, Indonesia. Once upon a time, this place was too expensive for us and we couldn't afford to live here. And together, after about five years of striving, we managed to make our dream come true. During all of these big important life moments, I didn't care what shoes I was wearing or if my childhood teddy bear was there. <laughs> None of that stuff matters. These days, my clothes are mainly functional. I don't use my outfits to express who I am or my status and worth in society anymore. I finally know who I am, myself, and I don't really need to broadcast it to people. I sold most of all my expensive stuff, and the money I got back represents months of travel and happy life and adventure overseas. It really made me wonder at what I was thinking in the first place to exchange all that for a few pieces of leather stitched prettily together. <laughs> my books went to the community library for others to enjoy them. The nice clothes and bags to the cousins and friends who are still pursuing the corporate dream. It felt so liberating to find welcoming new homes for the stuff and to reclaim the space in my parents' home back for my folks and the kids. The hardest is still to let go of the mementos from the past. I keep having to remind myself that the good memories will forever be inside my heart. The stuff doesn't matter. And what's more important is to truly be present around the people I love now and to cherish them however I can every day. I'm still slowly getting through the last of my stuff and I think it's okay. Possibly, I may never get rid of everything entirely. I think there isn't a right or wrong answer when it comes to looking at your life and possessions and deciding what memories and emotions to let go of or what you no longer will buy again. 
I just think taking the time to ask ourselves the right questions about our stuff can save us a lot of time and effort and money from holding on to stuff that's basically emotional baggage or consuming stuff that we don't really need or letting consumerism hold us back from our true dreams. I hope that what I shared in this video was helpful to you in some way and perhaps inspired you to take another moment before you buy your next new thing or perhaps do some decluttering and check in with your emotional closet. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video every week, for your support. I really appreciate you being around so I have someone to share these thoughts with. Have a wonderful weekend and let's chat again next Saturday.